Arthur C. Clarke, scientist, inventor, author, humanitarian, a doer, one of the most influential thinkers of the 20th century. Everything about this man was out of this world. Arthur really is a, a Columbus of the mind of, of the future, and his spaceship, his, his vessel, is his imagination. Arthur's incredible imagination, scientific knowledge, and literary skills have enriched beyond measure the very history of the 20th century. Arthur, I might have seen the world, but you've shaped it. Sir Arthur, as we know him, inspired many and contributed much to life as we know it. To life as he predicted it. If we are exploring space now, then obviously superior intelligences must have been doing this for millions of years. It was in 1945 that he was the first to set out the principles of communication satellites in geosynchronous orbit, which changed the world in so many ways for all of us. He led the way into global communications, as well as contributing to the study of ocean environments, to smart and nuclear energy technologies, rockets, missiles, space elevators, advanced materials, astrophysics and robotics. Sir Arthur was celebrated, decorated, nominated for the Nobel Prize and then awarded a knighthood by the Queen in 2000. In the film 2001 A Space Odyssey and his nearly a hundred books of science, fact and fiction, Arthur C. Clarke predicted the future of mankind. He wrote about space travel before the rest of the world even believed in it. He saw many of his predictions come true. The success of 2001 was a great surprise. It may be something to do with the timing. It came out just before the first Apollo flight around the moon and then of course the landing on the moon in July 1969. But never underestimated the wonder of discovery. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And if you want examples of that, look at around your house, look at the pocket calculators, look at the television set. All, almost half the gadgets in your house would have been pure magic. Even to Edison, who lived you know, well into our century and made, of course, many of the devices which we have. Pure magic. That's what Arthur Clarke predicted in his article in Wireless World in 1945 anticipating the launch of hundreds of satellites that today provide us with telecommunications, internet access, and over 10,000 television channels. In the mid-60s, he predicted that sometime in the not-too-distant future, a person with a small handheld device will be able to talk to and see pictures from any place on Earth. This was not taken seriously at the time, but just look at us now. As I approach my 90th birthday, my friends are asking me how it feels to have completed 90 orbits around the sun. I actually don't feel a day older than 89. 90 orbits around the sun then, wasting not a precious moment, catching the imagination of the Apollo crews stretching the curiosity of the millions who watched his TV programs and inspiring all who read his books. Arthur C. Clarke pondered the universe. This farmer's son from Somerset in England delivered newspapers in the early morning light. He used the front wheel and the handlebars of his bike to mount his first handmade telescope and made a map of the moon. He experimented with rockets at 13 years old, developed sound transmission using light waves at 17, and later, while serving in the Royal Air Force in the war, he worked on the development of the first blind landing radar system, which led to today's automatic aircraft landing technology. Sir Arthur never stopped imagining, inventing, inspiring. I now spend a good part of my day dreaming of times past, present and future. Being completely wheelchaired doesn't stop my mind from roaming the universe. On the contrary. Sir Arthur never stopped dreaming about our planet, about the human race. 
In his 90th birthday greeting, just before he died, he talked about communications technologies and the endlessly chattering global family. But he also stressed qualities like tolerance and compassion to achieve greater understanding and the faith he had in optimism as a guiding principle. If only, he said, because it offers us the opportunity to create a self-fulfilling prophecy. He wanted us to overcome our tribal divisions and think and act as if we were one family. That, he said, would be real globalization. He finished his greetings by saying that he had no regrets and no more personal ambitions. But he did have three wishes. He would like to see some evidence of extraterrestrial life. He would like to see us kick our current addiction to oil and adopt clean energy resources. And lastly, he wished to see lasting peace in his adopted and beloved home of Sri Lanka. I want to be remembered most as a writer who entertained readers and hopefully stretched their imaginations as well. So at the end, with these words of Rudyard Kipling, if I have given you delight by all that I have done, let me lie quiet in that night which shall be yours anon. And for the little, little span the dead are born in mind, seek not to question other than the books I leave behind. This is Arthur Clarke saying thank you and goodbye from Colombo.